So I just got out of watching Creed 2, and I wanna let you guys know, this is a non-spoiler review. There will not be a spoiler review, because I think I can get out all my thoughts without giving away anything in the film. So the first problem with this movie <laughs> is it's quite predictable, and that first hour takes effort to get through. It's like, okay, we get it, movie. We, we've seen these steps. Please move on to the next part. And that almost made me completely write the movie off and dislike it. But then the second hour happens, and even though there are still perfunctory scenes, the emotion in Michael B. Jordan's acting is so captivating. It's so real. Like, this movie made me realize that he's definitely one of my favorite actors right now because he's got this innocence, this vulnerability about him that I just feel it. I don't know, like, he, it, it's so believable and he's so charismatic, I just, I'm with him. I'm with him on his journey, even though the movie's story was quite predictable and quite cliche ridden. I still felt what he felt and it's great to see, you know, Sylvester Stallone again as Rocky. The cast did a great job with the acting, but Michael B. Jordan just, of course, stands up above the rest because where he goes emotionally is so real. And I appreciate that about him. I really, I really like what he did. Another thing I liked was during the fight scenes, even though you don't have Ryan Coogler's touch in there, they managed to make those hits look real. There wasn't one hit in that movie that I questioned. They, I don't know if they used visual effects to enhance it, but it just really connected. And there's even slow motion shots to really emphasize the hits. Like I thought they did a great job with making those hits feel like they connected. There must be some visual effects in there or excellent camera trickery because it, it was well executed. Uh, now, that being said, every time there was a boxing scene like with the crowd, the green screen, man, it just, ugh, it looks so bad. I like, I, w I wish there was a, like a more creative way for them to f actually have a stadium and kind of, you know, use extras in a smart way because I could, I could tell it was green screen. I'm like, ah, I, and it, just, it kind of took me out of the movie a little bit. Um, the, the music, I got the legacy music in there and that moves you. And so that's, you know, there are times where it just felt like this director was doing, it was almost like a fan film. It was almost like a fan film of Rocky. I'm like, okay, so this guy's seen a bunch of Rocky movies and he's just trying to like do all the Rocky things, but it, it, it lacks a little bit of heart from the director's side, it feels like. It, a lot of the shots feel very basic. It didn't feel like he was being very creative. It felt like he's seen all the other films and tried to make an amalgamation of all of them in some capacity, I don't know. But um, overall, I gave it three and a half stars. On Stardust, I gave it three because I can't nuance the rating, but I, I gave it three and a half stars. The, the second hour recouped it emotionally for me. And that's important because after that first hour, I thought I was done with the movie. I'm like, this is crap, I don't like it. Why, they just ruined it, they should have stopped at one. But then the second hour comes in, you're like, okay, all right, I, I'm crying. So that means, that must mean something that I'm crying. They, the combination of Michael B. Jordan's acting with that legacy music, it worked. It worked on me. And uh, Sylvester Stallone, he's got some good scenes. And uh, he, he also like used that Rocky vulnerability that he had in Rocky One. And it's like, oh boy, I don't know why, but it's making me tear up. I feel like a little bitch. So anyways, you guys, those are my thoughts. I recommend it, even though it's gonna be frustrating at times to watch because it's predictable. And yeah, thanks for hanging out. I'm Jabby Kuwait, peace out.